Okay, so here I am in a new project. To get started, first we're going to need to go into project settings, and then we're going to type in uh, pixel to the filter and uh, unclick snap controls to pixel. This is going to help us much later when we're working on making everything look good. Uh, so we can do scene, user interface. Uh, we're going to call it audio visualizer. Visualizer, spelled that right, great. Um, let's save this, okay. Uh, let's get some audio. So let's add an audio stream player, call it music player. I've already imported the two assets we'll need, the black circle and the battle theme. Um, I'm going to add battle theme into this audio stream. It's pretty loud, so I'm going to make it negative 15 decibels. I'm going to select autoplay. And now we have to talk about buses, audio buses. Um, I already have one set up here, let me delete that. Uh, yeah. So um, the master bus is uh, where all the audio will pass through before it is uh, sent off to be listened to. Uh, if you want to listen to certain pieces of audio before it gets to the master bus, we have to make a new one. So let's make a new one, call it uh, music. You could do this for like player sounds or music or, or anything else you wanted to um, isolate from the master bus. We're going to need to add an effect if we want to do some spectrum analysis. Let's add the spectrum analyzer uh, effect. That's great. Okay. Um, next up, we need to actually make the audio visualizer look like something. So let's add a texture rectangle. We're going to call this circle base, and I'm going to add the black circle texture in here. We're going to check off, ignore texture size, uh, go down into layout, transform, and give it a size of 64 by 64. Uh, in fact, I'm going to actually set the scale to 7 here so we can actually see it. Um, pretty easily, and I'm going to center that. Center, please, the anchors, yeah. Now I'll set the pivot to, I guess it's an anchor issue. Oh well, we'll leave it as it is. Okay, next up, um, I'm going to add a control node. And I'm going to call it right. And I'm going to add another control node. And I'm going to call this bottom. Um, I'll explain why we do this in a moment, but for now we're just going to keep it up. Um, yeah. Let's center these. Set that to center and center. Uh, we're not going to be rotating these, so we don't need to set up the pivot. But let's uh, start making the rectangles that we're going to be manipulating to make the auto, uh, audio spectrum effect. So here we have the color rectangle. We're going to go into the layout, um, and we're going to set its size to 2 in the X and 1 in the Y. So there it is. Um, we also need to change the pivot offset to 1 in the X and 0 0.5 in the Y. That's just half the size to get it into the center, because we will be rotating them later. Uh, let's enable snar uh, smart snapping, and we're going to drag this down. Oops, not the anchor, we want the actual thing. We're going to drag this down here into roughly the center. Yeah, don't worry too much about it, just put it where you think it'll fit. Now we're going to make 16 of these, and we'll talk about why we do that in a moment, but let's... Uh, that looks fine. We're going to duplicate these with Control D, and we're going to build them out. And it's okay if it's, you know, not perfect. But 16 should fit, assuming we have done our stuff correctly. As you can see, it's it's not perfect. Um, we can just shift them all over a little bit. Mm, yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. So this is going to represent currently the entire spectrum, but we're going to split it up later. Let's add a... Oh, this is not correct. I need to go like that. Yep. Okay, that looks good. Let's add a new script to the audio visualizer, call it audio visualizer. Now we're going to manip be manipulating these color rectangles uh, from the children of this node, the bottom node. So let's get all of those children. So that's going to be the bottom right, bottom right, right bottom here. And we're just gonna get all the children, so let me paste that right in. Okay, another thing we're going to be needing is the actual spectrum uh, analyzer effect. So I'm going to paste the code in here and then describe it. 
So uh, we're going to ask the audio server to get us uh, the effect. This is on the second bus and the first effect, which is this is the first or the second bus, and the first effect is the spectrum analysis effect. That's looking good. Uh, we have to define some constants here. I'm not going to go into these. Um, the actual spectrum analysis we're doing is from an example um, that uh, is a little complex. I don't fully understand it myself, but we're going to use it anyway. Now in the process function, uh, I'm just going to paste all of the mathy math that we do. Um, it has to do with frequencies, um, amplitudes, and converting that into a height of some kind. The height variable is what we're going to be using uh, to create the size of our rectangles relative to the, the music or the sound that you're using. Uh, the VU count represents the number of rectangles that you, we want to manipulate, so um, if you have a different number, make sure to use that <clears throat> or change that. So let's get the uh, bottom right rectangle. So we're going to go into our bottom right array, which is uh, all of these colored rectangles. And uh, we are going to <clears throat> uh, get the first element, the second element, all throughout this, uh, this for loop. Um, it's written like this because the code I'm using uh, goes from 1 to uh, 16, so we're going to subtract 1 to get the correct elements. Um, so we have the height, which is actually going to tell us uh, how large our rectangles should be. Uh, so we could just set the size of our rectangles to that height, but we're going to use a tween to make it look a little bit better. This is going to be like this. So we're going to create a tween, and then we're going to tween the uh, size property of this rectangle, each of these rectangles. And we're going to keep the size the same, but to change its height over a period of 0 0.05 seconds. So if this is all looking good, we should be able to play this and see what we want. Oh, one last thing, we need to change the bus on the music player to music. That's how we're going to say uh, or tell um, Godot to actually uh, process that through the music bus first. If you don't do that, you're not going to get any effect. Okay, so we can see it's working. Um, I want you to take note of how this is uh, being displayed. It's coming from the left here, um, and it's this is what we want to be on the center, this left side. So let's uh, let's split it up. We need to make four of those basically, and then um, rotate them correctly so that they're going to uh, look nice. So let's head in here to layout for the. Uh, bottom, the right bottom, and we're set the scale to actually 0 0.5. This will be one uh, quarter of what we want. Okay, that's fine. Um, so right bottom will be correct all on its own. Let's duplicate this. And we're going to call this uh, top. And the only difference here is that the color rectangles need to grow uh, up instead of down. So we're going to rotate all these color rectangles by 180 degrees. We're going to select them all with shift click and then rotate 180 degrees. Okay. I'm just going to go through this part and then set up the scripts, to check everything. Next, we're going to duplicate the entire right side. And we're going to call it left. And we're going to shift this over. Right around there looks fine. <clears throat> okay. The bottom should be good. The top. Uh, should be good as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, that's all fine. Um, normally we would have to rotate this. I do not recommend that you do that. Um, that gets really, really funky in Godot when you rotate these things. So instead, we're going to do a little trick. Uh, we are going to reverse those arrays so that the correct elements are processed first to look like it's been reversed. Um, so we are going to need all of those uh, arrays for all those color rectangles. So I'm just going to copy and paste uh, this big thing in here that has all four of them. It's just going to be the exact same thing as the first example, except that in our ready function here, we are going to um, reverse the bottom left array and the top left array. So again, it follows the exact same um, system as our first, first example. Um, it, they're just broken up into these quadrants, top right, bottom right, top left, bottom left. 
and we're going to do the exact same thing for all of these. I'm just gonna copy and paste it all in. Okay, bottom right rectangles, top right rectangles, etc. And then we're just going to tween all of those. Just like this. They all follow the exact same system. Um, yeah, let's test this. Okay, looks good. If you found the video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks.